Hey guys, I'm Patrick from Alpine Ice Freestyles. Today I'll give you some personal advices how you'll find the best ice skating equipment for you. Today I will talk about the following things. If you're just interested in some of them, you can skip there. For this video, I went to a small family-run skate shop at my hometown ice rink. I will show you some examples of the skates that they sell here and I will also show you the exact gear that I use. First and most important, the skate. There are two different shapes of skating blades. The regular hockey blades and the figure skating blade, which is a little bit longer than the regular skating blade, has longer ends and those edges at the tip. If you are a beginner, I would not choose this one because I see two major mistakes of people using those skates. First one, because this one is longer at the end than the hockey skate, you can see it's getting over the heel. So the people leaning backwards, because they can, they can't do it in a hockey skate, but leaning backwards kills your ability to do movements on the ice. And the second mistake, I often see that at figure skaters, that they use those edges to push themselves forward. They use the edges, put them in the ice and try to push themselves forward like this and not the regular skating technique. So if you start skating, I would choose the hockey blade because the figure skating blade allows errors the hockey blade does not allow. In this video I will concentrate on hockey shaped blades. For example this one, the blue, the rental skates, everybody of you knows this pretty hard, pretty solid rental skate. Yeah, and if you want to go one level higher, you're not just skating one or two times per year, then you can use the next one, the soft boot skate, which is also called fitness skate. It's like a very comfortable sports boot with a blade mounted underneath. So this one, if you want to go skating a few times per year, but you're just doing it for fun, just going in circles, maybe go backwards, learn the first things, then this one is the perfect choice for you. One level higher is the regular hockey skate or the intermediate hockey skate, which is around 100 euros. So with this skate, you can do by far more than by a soft boot. You can do sharper turns, harder breaks and everything else wherefore a hard skate is needed which is still comfortable inside. So if you want to go a level higher, buy an intermediate hockey skate. I can give you two advices to the intermediate hockey skate or nearly every hockey skate you buy. They come with those pretty easy, pretty cheap laces and I change the laces to waxed laces. The waxed laces, they stay perfectly in form and make a perfect fit to the boot. The second advice is that the hockey skates normally come with those plastic insoles which are not that comfortable for the foot so I changed them to those customized soles which uh, have the perfect form the perfect shape of my foot they're also flexible and give the foot a better fit in the boot the highest level is the pro hockey skate which is this kind of bower or mine which are around 800 euros this is my boot for example I'm using T-Blade for three or four years now and as I started using T-Blades I completely struggled with them. If you're thinking about switching from hockey skates to T-Blade, take your time, buy a cheap T-Blade skate or rent one and give it one month. So you like T-Blade or you hate it. For the most people there's nothing in between. Good thing at T-Blade is that you don't need to sharp them because you can't. You just exchange them and you always get the exact same feeling on the skate that you had on the blade before, just sharper. If you found the perfect skate for you, you need to connect the skate with your foot and you do that with socks. I often see people using two or three layers of socks in their hockey skates and put their pants into the skates. This is completely senseless. Use one layer of socks and don't put your pants into your shoes because this makes a terrible, terrible feeling to your legs after the skate. Hockey socks, as the name says, are made for skating, made for hockey because the most used parts of the socks are doubled, are made more stable and also avoid you from rubbing yourself bloody into your skates, especially when they are new. So spend a few euros into some good hockey skating socks. Part 3. Hats and helmets. I wear this hat every time I go on the ice. It's a pretty thin hat, so it's just to protect me from the cold and not protect me from falling. I never had a 
fall where I hit my head. I'm a goalkeeper, a football goalkeeper, so I train falling nearly every day. So I think I can protect myself from falling. But can you? Safety is pretty important, especially on the ice. It's a slippery surface and if you fall, you will land hard. If you want to be on a safe side, wear a helmet. For me, the best helmet for ice skating is such a skiing helmet because the ears are also protected from the cold and from falling. It's a lightweight helmet. It's also pretty stable, so it will protect your head because if your head is damaged can be a major injury. Just a slight fall can put you into a wheelchair for the rest of your life. And if you say, no, I don't want to wear a helmet, wear at least a thick hat. It will protect you from smaller falls, but a pretty, pretty hard fall, just a helmet can protect you from it. Part five of this video is about protective gear. With protective gear, you always have to decide between how much you will save yourself from falling and how much you will lose of your agility because of wearing it. For example, those knee pads are used by lots of freestylers for doing knee slides and everything. But I tried them and they block my agility too much for me and they are not that comfortable for me. So I tried a different knee protector which is a little bit more motionable, more flexible, more lightweight. It's a goalkeeper knee protector which is working for me but also blocks my agility in my knee too much. So the final choice for me was this special pants because those pants have a knee protector in them which is not that visible. Now I turned the pants inside out and now the protectors are visible. They're just some small lightweight protectors which are sewed inside the pants. Thank you, mommy. And they are thick enough to save me from falling, but they are not fixed on my body. They are fixed in my pants. So I can't really feel them when I skate. So this is the perfect fit for me between saving myself, protecting my knee and using the full agility I have. And I have another protective gear, which is hidden under my pants also. And this is those padded underwear pants. This protects you from so much pain or protected me from so much pain already. So I'll never skate again without those. Part six of this video is about the clothes I regularly wear on the ice. I wear those motionable, flexible pants with a very flexible belt, which makes the whole pants perfect and very comfortable fit and also allow me to do every motion I want. I'm also wearing functional underwear on my upper body because I sweat when I skate. And on top of that, I wear this t-shirt and just a normal pullover with my sign on it. All right, guys, this was my first tutorial about skates and other equipment, which is useful if you want to get a better skater. If you liked the video, click here to subscribe to my channel. There you will find part two of my tutorial series about body position on the ice. And down here you will find a random skating video. See ya!